要尽生一种骄傲心，认为我呀超过一切，我高过一切，我比谁都有智慧。成一种自满的心，你那些满子呢？什么智慧也进不去了，因为你满了嘛。你那智慧呀、啊，宝藏是在你那不满的时候才能装进装进去。你要满了，啊，又该呀、啊、向外流了。你看那个满里的水，你要装满了，它就向外流。哎，古人说“空手把竹头，路行七水牛，人从桥上过。”桥流水不流，啊，因为空一般的人呢，就是哎，这个呃，这个禅这里头这怎么讲呢？怎么叫空手把锄头呢？不会解释。啊，我这个笨人呢，我给他这么问他的。这手里是空的，你才能把这骨头。你要这手里有东西，怎么会把骨头呢？空手把骨头，这有什么讲呢？这有什么残疾在里头呢？没有，就是啊，人转不过那相呢。啊，空手把骨头是怎么回事？你看，听说有一个学者研究千手千眼，观世音菩萨，啊，拿出呃，搜集很多材料来对证到一起，倒看看他是不是千手，啊，对证一下，啊，考证一下。其实啊，这个千手千眼的观世音菩萨只是一个名称，他也不一定一千个手，或者他有一千零一个手，或者他有一千零一呃呃十个手，或者有一千零一百个手。不一定的，不过他总共起来名词啊，就叫千手千眼。回来他的手有九十九只，呃，九百九十九只，回来九十八，九百九十八只，这不一定的，何必在这个上来用功夫呢？啊，路行七水牛，你看，路行。你是在道路上走，啊，大路的路，路行溪水，那个水牛都不是单单在水里可以跑啊，在路上也可以跑啊，所以你在路上行路的时候，也可以溪水牛嘛，没有什么奇怪。人从桥上过，人在桥上过呢，好像看着这桥流啊，水不流似的。这都是没有什么一定了不起的意思在那头啊，这个人就是啊，啊，在那钻窟窿、钻牛角尖，怎么叫空手把竹头？怎么叫路行七水牛？怎么叫人从头桥上过？怎么叫人？哎、啊，桥流水不流。哎、啊，这个你看，本来没有事。天下本无事，庸人自扰之啊
，经好一些些个啊，浪费时间的路，如来认为是可怜悯者呀。小法师啊，你昨天许的愿，要给他们讲一讲这个近来中国啊一百年的经验和经过这些个大事，一百年以来的大事啊。你不要讲这个空车把出头，路行七水牛。呃，人从桥上过，桥流水不流。我没有愿意想要听这个，你想这个干什么？对不起。At no time do you want to become arrogant. If you feel that you have transcended everybody else and that you have greater wisdom than everybody else, then you are self-complacent. And once you become smug and full of yourself, no wisdom can enter. Why? Because you are already full to the brim, and wisdom cannot enter. The treasury of wisdom can only enter when you yourself are empty or hollow. Once you are full, then anything that comes in will just overflow. Now there is a verse that goes this way: With empty hands you carry a hole. Walking on the road, you can ride on a water buffalo. A person walks across a bridge. The bridge flows, but the water does not flow. Now, when people hear this, they say, "Oh, this is a charm verse. It's really、uh, enigmatic. We can't figure it out. What does it mean?" But I'm a very stupid person, so I'll explain this verse in a stupid way. The first line says, "With empty hands, we carry a hole." Well, of course, if your hands weren't empty, you wouldn't be able to carry anything. So what this mystery is there in this verse is very simple, very straightforward. It's just that people get caught in marks and appearances, and so they are perplexed. It's just like recently we hear that there's a scholar who was doing research on the Thousand Eyes Binding Bodhisattva, and he took different sections from various sutras and tried to. Collect all this material together and try to figure out exactly how many hands this bodhisattva had. He tried to prove that he had a thousand hands. But actually, you should know that a thousand hands or a thousand eyes—that's just a name. It's not fixed. It's not to say that the bodhisattva only has one thousand hands and no more, no less. He could have a thousand and one hands, or a thousand and ten hands, or a thousand and a hundred hands. Or maybe he only has 999 or 998 hands. So why do you want to expand your effort on such minor details? Now the second line says,、uh, "One walks on the road and rides in a water buffalo." Well, that's not so strange. You could be walking on the road, but you could also ride in a water buffalo. A buffalo not only moves in water; it can also move on land. Now, when a person walks across the bridge, you may,、uh, because there's an illusion, optical illusion, that makes it appear as if the water is not flowing, but the bridge is flowing. So it's just a matter of perception, how you look at it. And there's nothing very mysterious about this verse. But people get caught up in different tangents, and then they.、Um, Get really carried away, so they think that the verse is very mysterious. This is a case of originally there's nothing under heaven, but stupid people make a lot of trouble for themselves, and so they waste a lot of time walking on wrong paths, and they are very pathetic. 
Now somebody is saying, Dharma Master, you told us last night that you were going to discuss the major events that have happened in China for the past century. So we are waiting to hear about that. Why are you talking to us about an empty hand and a hole? We don't want to hear anything about that. Well, sorry.
啊，换气。据我辟谱，在这高定函呢，这个老居士就请列位啊，不许和尚给呃说一说的呃，中国未来呀、啊，呃，这个呃，是到什么程度上？啊，他与我辟谣，要我给他呃说一说将来的呃事情发展到什么程度啊？这是在光绪三十年那时候呃说的啊。天机难泄，可知这天机不可泄露，难泄就是不可泄露，泄禅机。我稍微呀、啊、用禅语来呀、啊、说一说。嗯，这个道啊，为什么我方才说空手把竹头啊，步行骑水牛，人从桥上过，桥呃流水不流，这都是禅机啊，禅机啊。There's a piece of literature which is a prophecy. And it was composed during the 30th year of the reign of the Emperor Guangxu. That's at the end of the Qing Dynasty, in the beginning of the century. In Beijing, 30 years of Guangxu, 30 years, yeah. And it was in, it was written in Beijing. It came like an oracle. In the Xishan Yun Si, the monastery, Azure Cloud. And the layman was called Gao Jinghan, and he requested a monk, the spirit of a monk called Bu Xu He Shang, to give this oracle. And before this old monk spoke his oracle, he prefaced it with an eight-line verse. And the eight-line verse says, "In the past, because I had to flee from chaos,、uh, I sought for Bodhi." I mistakenly entered Tiantai Mountain, the west side of Shigu Mountain. In the morning, I drank the flowing mists to quench my thirst. In the evening, I tasted sweet dew to、um, drive away my hunger. I sat, I sat facing a wall for nine years and accomplished the great path. In the snap of my fingers, ten dynasties have passed, and now there is a new government. Because someone wishes me to reveal certain secrets, someone wishes that I reveal certain secrets. But basically, heavenly secrets cannot be divulged. So I will speak in Chan terms, couched in Chan terms. Now this was a monk who lived during the Sui Dynasty. That's the sixth century AD in China. At that time, China was going through a lot of turmoil, and in order to avert this kind of turmoil, he went up to Tiantai Mountain in search of a paradise, a haven, and left the home life there. And so, the beginning of his verse talks about how he entered Tiantai Mountain. On the south, on the west side, of a hill called Shifu, and he started to cultivate. And the life was very ascetic. There was nothing to eat or drink. In the morning, he drank the dew, the flowing mist, to quench his thirst. And in the evening, he only drank sweet dew. And there was no vegetables or rice to speak of, much less oil and salt. And for nine years, he sat facing the wall until he accomplished the great way. But now the time has gone so fast that it was like as though he had just snapped his finger, and ten dynasties, dynastic rules have already transpired, from the Sui Dynasty all the way to the end of the Qing Dynasty, the beginning of the century.、Um, it's already several hundred years and ten dynasties. Now the layman Gao Jinghan asked this monk to speak. Uh, an oracle about the development of China, and so he said it's very difficult to reveal heavenly secrets. But I will speak a verse couched in Chan terms, and that's why just now I brought up the 
poem about the empty hand carrying the whole, that's also a Chan verse. <coughs> 
A three-year-old child enjoys three years of blessings. Beneath the moon there is no master, and the water has run dry. Thousands of acres of mist and waves in the one day is finished. Now what does this mean? The beginning says the clouds are really somber and the fog is sad. It paints a picture of a very sad, sorrowful time. This is towards the end of the Qing Dynasty. And so the dragon returns to the earth. The dragon, of course, represents the emperor. However, the emperor is now submerged and instead they sculpt a monkey. They sculpt a toy monkey to play with. Now who is this monkey? It's the emperor Shen Tong. Because when he ascended the throne, he was only a three-year-old boy. And of course, he didn't know what was going on. And so when they put him on the throne, he started to wail. Now, uh, Shadow Wong, his uncle, was holding him and trying to comfort this little boy. And he said, don't cry, don't cry. It's going to be over in a very short while. So those were prophetic words, because sure enough, it was over in a very short while. The little boy sat on the throne for three years. And then the Qing dynasty came to an end. And of course he really never understood what it meant to be a king. Now the next line says, Underneath the moon there is no master and the water has run dry. This is an allusion to the character of Qi. Because in the Chinese it's got water radical on one side and then uh, the character for master underneath the, which is the moon. But now it says, underneath the moon there is no master and the water has run dry, meaning that the Qing dynasty is finished. So you see it was all uh, written in the stars already. People knew about this long ago. This is no joke. And I'm revealing the secrets to you now because these things have transpired so there's no problem. I really don't have the power of prophecy. I can't foretell anything. But I can tell you about it now that the things have transpired. And where did I learn this talent? I learned it from you.
各位有没有什么呃另外的意见？
and the character that's missing is one because Sun Wen is his name. So from these two lines you know that it's talking about Dr. Sun. And he started the revolution in China. And so he started from Honolulu. He was studying in Hawaii. He came back to China and at that time there was no airplane. So he rode on a boat. And as this boat made its way through the waves, breaking through, it was like a long rainbow, a magnificent rainbow riding through the waves coming towards China. And then the Yellow Crane Pavilion, this is a place in Wutang, uh, where he started, he, he, he made a clarion call for the revolution, and immediately people responded everywhere throughout the country. So it said, the eight directions chorus and they sang a song of victory because the revolution was successful. And then a five colored flag was hoisted and the colors were new. After the revolution, they designed a new flag for China and at that time the flag had five colors representing the five main ethnic groups which were the Han people, the uh, Manchu people, the Mongolian people, the people, uh, the Muslim people, and the Tibetan people. So this is the way I'm explaining these lines, but if you think that I have um, explained them incorrectly, I can um, hit my own mouth. <laughs> Yeah, 
一天就决定要做皇帝啊，就因为他听这宫门骗子、啊、说他是真龙了啊，本来是蛤蟆精。<笑>就跟这袁世凯呀，这这条怎么说的呢？是吉事怀柔，那个“袁”字上面有“徐”字啊，怀柔，这个“怀”字下面有这个，好像衣服的“衣”，没有这个一点一横呢，这下面有这个呃这半段，所以呀、啊，他说吉事怀柔，其实就是“袁”字，就是袁世凯的“袁”字。吉字加下面那个那个衣服的呃还没有做好那个衣服啊，就呃他穿上也不像个衣服，所以叫圆字啊。如果加一个一字，就不是怀柔了啊。那个怀字底下呢，那一半啊，怀字上边呢呃那一半不那一段不要，要下边呢。那一小段啊，吉事怀柔，这是“元”字。三十年变，三十，哎，这个这这么一横，然后三三竖，那么三竖这三十啦，三十变了，变了底下又加一横，这是个世界的事，啊，对吗？世界的事，其凡人在。七凡人，呃，七字加一个凡字是个楷字。七凡人呢，说这个不是个凡人啊，啊，不是个凡人是个什么？是个一蛤蟆精啊，啊，所以说，啊，七凡人呢，繁华一现，啊，在他做皇帝做了八十三天。啊，繁华一现。呃，南北东西，龙争虎战。南北东西呀、啊，南京啊，有个分过章，啊，说是一条狗啊，是一条龙啊，是一条虎啊，又什么段祺瑞，那时候不啊，龙龙争虎战，七八数变。七八七八是十五，啊，呃，我没学过算个数，但是大家不会错，你错。<笑>啊，山川出殿，呃，北帕山宫，统一呃中华民国，啊，就是呃山川出殿，就是说的袁世凯。Refers to Yuan Shikai. Yuan Shikai was the great general commander, and、uh, he was also the emperor of China for a very short time. Now, actually, he was a big cold essence, a big fog. But he thought he was the true dragon, the emperor. Now, how did this come about? Yuan Shikai, when he was the、uh, prime minister, had a jade cup which he loved dearly. And every day his servant would bring tea in the cup to to his room. Now one day, one afternoon, the servant brought in the tea in the cup, but Yuan Shikai was asleep on his bed. He was taking a nap, and the servant saw on the bed a huge frog. It was several feet wide. That was the original shape of Yuan Shikai, and he was so scared that he let go of the cup, and the, and the cup broke. When it fell to the ground, broke into pieces. Now Yuan Shikai did not get up, but the servant raised outside and was petrified. And he spoke to the butler. He said, "This is the end of me, because I broke our master's jade cup, and when he finds out, I'm done in." But the butler said, "Oh, I know a way to save you from this predicament. When he wakes up, just tell him that when he walked into his room." You saw on the bed a golden dragon, and he's going to be so pleased that not only will you not have any trouble, you will give, you'll be given a, a, a raise, you'll become an official. 
And so the servant was delighted, and that's what he did. So when Yerushakai woke up, the servant said, Oh, I went into your room just now, and I saw a golden dragon on the bed, and I was so scared I broke the jade cup. So Yerushakai was pleased. And from that day on, he was resolved to become the emperor of China, because he thought he himself was a dragon. He didn't know that the servant had cheated him. So anyway, the first is, Ji Shu Hai and this is uh, the configuration it's referring to is the first character in Yuan. That's his last name. The second line says there is change in 30 years. Now 30 in Chinese is written uh, one way and when there is a, a change, when the slash is added, it becomes the word Shi, which is the second character for Yuan Shi Tai's name. And the third line says, how could he be an ordinary person? Now this Qi Fan Ren Zai, these two characters make up his third, the third word in his name. So just those three lines alone, you can see his name come out. And it says, it's like the Udambara flower manifesting, a sudden manifestation. This is a kind of flower that blooms once in a blue moon but very quickly it will fade. And so it was referring to his reign. He reigned as an emperor, but only for 83 days. Then his regime got smashed. Then the next line says, the south, the north, the east and the west, dragons fight and tigers battle. Now this was when different warlords and great generals rose up in different parts of China. There was Sun Guozhang and Duan Qirei and other people, and they were vying for the kingdom like dragons and tigers uh, in battle. And so the seven and the eight were settled. Seven and eight means fifteen. So fifteen years later on, the the country was first established, began to be established. This is when the northern part of the territory finally got uh, settled and all of China came under one rule. And that was 15 years after this battle has been going on. So this verse refers to Yen Shikai.
，这时候到江南了啊，呃，这个呃，姜维人长啊，江南了，江南就是呃，南京啊，啊，金陵日月有晨光。南京这个日月又光明了，啊，这是长得什么相同的，这都有来历的，都是榜上有名的，早就都注定了，啊，早就都安排好了，啊，也是好像我们这个呃选区总统嘛，早都内定了，啊，早内定了。啊，是选举，不过就是走的形式而已。这是呃第四条。Now the fourth verse refers to Zhang Kaishek, the the ruler later on of Taiwan, and the verse goes like this: Ah,、uh, spears. Uh, arose and people vied for the kingdom. This was talking about the period of the warlords fighting one another, trying to、uh, carve up, carve the empire into different pieces, but trying to monopolize the entire empire. Then from the bushes came a hero. He was going to come out of the mountain. Now the bushes. Has a grass radical, and below it is the word Jiang. So this is referring to Jiang Kai, Jiang Kai She, and that was his name.、Um, now that I have spoken of this very clearly, you know that's what it's about. But for ordinary people who didn't understand, if they looked at the verse, they wouldn't be able to figure out the name. But anyway, the verse says, "How many heroes came forth at that time?" They gathered like winds and clouds at Jiangna. So this is talking about a time when there were great generals and warriors that rose up in China, and they all met in Jiangna region, that is Nanjing, Nanjing, Nanjing. And in Jinning, which is Nanjing, the sun and moon emitted light again. So this was a time when there was a brief、uh, revival. When the country came under one rule for a very short time, and so you can see this prophecy was made a long time ago, but already all the names of these heroes were、uh, on the list. You can say that everything was predetermined; it was all written out in the stars. It was all mapped out, and maybe、uh, it's like the elections nowadays. Although they say there is free voting. Um, actually, knew who was going to win, so it was all fixed. And it's the same way with these heroes that we're talking about. The fifth rule is saying that the Japanese swords, Japanese swords, uh, long-handed swords, ah, uh, so is, Jinjuu, Duhai Lang. 茫满天，红日更昏黄。茫茫神州，山破碎。苍生，苍生，到处哭爹娘。啊，春雷炸响见晴阳。这是说的鹰州虎，就是啊。呃，日本那叫菩萨啊，又叫鹰州啊，啊，他在那个鹰州那就是像个老虎似的，渡海了，那么到呃渡过海到中国了，啊，也就像豺狼似的，就这么厉害，啊，茫满天红日，本来日本呢是应该红的红太阳啊，啊，可是昏黄了，啊。呃，那么有一些个雾气昭昭的，不不太清楚。在这个时候啊，啊，茫茫神州山河水，咱们这中国的这个茫茫的神州啊，啊，就是武林四
子上，其离子上，背井离乡啊！啊，他们抗战八年的时候啊，呃，其离子上呢，父子不相见，兄弟妻子离散呢、啊，呃，这个时间不知多少。所以说，苍生到处哭爷娘，那个呃，一些个儿子啊。就叫爸爸、妈妈，各种喊爸爸、喊妈妈，啊，叫天天也不应，叫地地也不灵了，啊，苍生到处哭爷娘，春雷大响见平阳，春雷大响是什么呢？一个原子弹落到黄岛那儿，啊，呃，呃，把这个呃这个太阳那边打掉。一颗原子弹在那这个太阳面洒落下。Uh, Now the next verse, which is the fifth one, talks about the Japanese invasion. So the verse says, "The tiger of the Ujo and the and the wolf who crossed the."、Uh, The waters. Now Japan is called Inzo, and the Japanese, when they came across to China through the waters, was like a fierce tiger, and they were also like a wolf who crossed the water when it invaded China. The next line says, "A red sun filled the sky, but it scorched the sky until it became yellow." This is because. Japan is called the land of the rising sun, but when it came to China and and、uh, really did a lot of damage to people, it was like the sun、uh, that had become yellow,、uh, meaning that it was going to set soon. So in the vast expanse of China, everything was broken apart. When the Japanese invaded China for eight years, the Chinese people suffered、uh, really drastically, and families were torn apart. A husband and wife couldn't be together. The children were separated from the parents, and there was just a lot of misery. So the country was torn apart. And the verse says the people everywhere were crying for their father and mother. They were all crying and weeping. And even when they called out to heaven and earth, heaven and earth would respond. The last line says, "A thunderclap in springtime." Suddenly, one could see the sun again. Now, what does this mean? The thunderclap in springtime. This refers to an atom bomb that was released in Hiroshima because that put an end to that event. And the、uh, the Japanese were put in their place after that.
，受果报就受原始障碍苦难。啊，这是不不是讲笑话，就是这么、呃、来的。因为他太残忍，所以原子弹呢，呃，这个全世界他是头一个吃原子弹的，<笑>因为他太厉害。这也叫入世因，入世果。咱们佛教讲因果，这一点我们大家要特别特别注意啊，就是因果报应。A strong power, and it was called the tiger. But when it crossed the water and came to China, it became like a a wolf. Now tigers are awesome, but still they won't actually hurt people. However, wolves creep up on you, and then they can steal your pigs and other domestic animals away, and you wouldn't even know it. So that was how the Japanese were when they invaded China. And so it was said that the red sun became yellow. Yellow. It lost its light. What does it mean? They resorted to really inhumane means. They were very cruel in killing a lot of people. And that was why a an atom bomb was released. They were the first country in the whole world to suffer、uh, an atom、uh, bomb explosion. And this is a matter of cause and effect. Because they were so cruel, they had to undergo this kind of punishment, and this is no joke. So everything is speaking the Dharma to you. Such being the cause, such is the result. Ah, 那么以后这一条就讲的谁呢？就讲西安事变。西安事变也是也是载到经传上的啊，都是早安排好的了。啊，呃，并不是啊，呃，这个偶然的，所以这个一下这么说的，说西柳英中群一雄，好饮，月圆中秋，甜醉未醒，双世波求，一堕其景。红粉佳人面颊英挺，你看，这里头有红粉佳人，这就是起了作用。而这细柳营中是长安那个地方，细柳营，长安结果不安，西安结果不安。啊，群雄好饮，在那个地方，大家都喝醉了，喝酒喝醉了，啊，呃，这个呃，高谈阔论，喝醉酒了，月圆中秋啊，啊，那时候啊，呃，是大有阴，呃，阴天，没有月光，中秋节，中秋节本来是月圆之夕呀。没有月光，月圆中秋，年醉未醒啊，他喝了酒，也没有，呃，都什么都不知道了。双世博求，两个狮子在那抢这个绣球，啊，就写抢这个锦绣的江山。两个人呢，啊，抢一段金锦，啊，那么杨总统就被人家给抓起来。哎，抓起来，这叫坐到亭里来，坐到亭里来，你看红粉佳人，又来一个呃宋美龄，啊呃女士，啊宋子文上面啊，对张小良一讲温情，张小良呢也就是呃这一个呃傻小子啊，呃就。就好了，哎、呃，杨总统放开，放开他，送他回去，送他回去，这回他又掉井里，哎、呃，又掉井里，掉了。这个井呢，是从古以来没有的这么长远的一个井，啊、呃，六六十多年，啊、呃，呃，我
五六十年的一个景，叫。这是一张图片，空中把你家人、你的、你家人的。下边就讲的日本投降了，啊，春雷大树白旗，万千千万的火鬼哭啼啼，石头城东飞夫道，又见同等看红泥，东山又有火光大，啊。所以说呢，春雷大，说这个原子弹一响了，竖白旗，日本人无条件投降，竖起白旗来了，啊，千万的火鬼哭泣，这时候这一些个狼呢，都变成火鬼了，啊，他们来哭哭泣泣的，石头城是南京。南京飞福道，下命令了，下命令了，呃，这个光复了，光复大陆了，光复大陆啊，中国，中国人又在南京呢，长山马褂，李一三百岁一三千，李一周周的啊，在那庆庆祝，庆祝日本投降。条件投降，中国光复。可是，在这个时候啊，东山又有火光照，东山呢、啊、又起了火光了，又着火了，啊，出来共产党的。东山是毛泽东，山，咱东山呢也是东，又有火光照，火光照就是红彩的。红彩的光露出来了，林彪在东北，哦，啊，就是招兵买马，聚草成粮，啊，共产党成功了。The sixth verse talks about the、uh, changes that happen in the place called Xi'an. It's all early on, all mapped out, and so the verse says, in the camp of Xi'an, the Many heroes uh, drank uh, wine and abandoned it. The moon was covered up during the mid-autumn festival, and they were all drunken and didn't even wake up. So this is painting the picture of a place in Chang'an, in the camp, in the barracks. There were these great generals who were leaders of the time, and they were all drinking. And it was the mid-autumn festival, but the moon was hidden because there were clouds, and they all got drunk. The next line says, "Two tigers fought over a ball, and one fell into a well." Now these two tigers were Jiang Kaisheng and Zhang Shiyang, the two greatest tigers, uh, uh, lions, the two lions. <laughs> And they were the greatest two contenders for the empire of China. So the ball that is referred, referred to is the, the beautiful country of China itself. And one time, one lion fell into the well. Who was it, Zhang Kaisheng? Because he was drunk and he was kidnapped. Then the last line said, a beautiful woman Uh, with all smiles in her face, on her face came to the rescue, and this was the uh, the wife, so many, um, with her brother so and so on. They came to General Jiang's rescue because so many used her charm and finally convinced Zhang Shiliang to release her husband. And Zhang Shiliang brought General Jiang back to his camp. And then he fell into the well because he was kidnapped in turn, and they took him to Taiwan where he was in imprisonment for over 60 years. So you could say that this was a very deep well. The seventh verse refers to the、uh, surrender of the Japanese, and the verse goes like this:、uh, There was a huge thunderclap in spring, and a white flag was hoisted. Thousands of living ghosts wept and cried. In the city of rocks, 
and a, uh, a command came and again there was revival of the ancient court uh, comportment but in the eastern mountains we see fire, the fireworks beginning so this is talking about the atom bomb after the atom bomb in Hiroshima the white flag was hoisted, the Japanese surrendered without any conditions and millions of living ghosts cried and wept. This is the Japanese crying. In the city of Rocks, this is Nanjing, a, a command came and it said all of China uh, was revived. This is China waking up after the Japanese invasion. And in Nanjing, which was uh, the capital of that time, they reverted to the ancient um, custom, the courtly custom, people were wearing uh, long robes and they really were decked out and they uh, were very, very dignified in their comportment, trying to bring back, bring China back to its feet again. However, right at this time, on the eastern side of the mountain, a blaze could be seen. Now, the word Dong is also a, an allusion to Mao Zedong, because the communist movement had just started and as you know it's red in color and so we say the, the fiery, the, the flame is starting to get uh, going so you could already see the red movement gathering momentum at that time and the India was in Manchuria gathering his troops so this was the kind of political scenario at that time <笑>下面就说的毛太宗那么呃不知道要不要听毛太宗啊这个毛太宗是这么这么说的说是啊日月日五星星日月无光日月被日食月食啊中国天狗吃太阳啊 
The eighth verse refers to Mao Zedong himself. And the verse says, the sun and moon were eclipsed, and the five stars became very dim. Two sevens worked together, and there were colorful banners hung. Now the sun and moon are eclipsed, which means China was again thrown into turmoil and there was darkness. The five stars, meaning the five ethnic tribes, uh, this became very dim because everything uh, was covered over in this period of civil war and internal turmoil. Two sevens add together. Now if you put the word two and seven together, it makes up the word for Mao. Mao, this is Mao Zedong. So anyway, colorful banners were hung, meaning that Mao Zedong came out. And the country people oppressed the golden tiger. Now what does country people mean here? It means the, um, the workers' army. This is the communist army. And they finally persecuted the golden tiger, which is the landlord. Because the, the farmers, the farmers oppressed the landlords. And so, throughout the land there were red flowers, and throughout the land there was hunger. The communist regime being red, it was like red flowers blooming throughout the kingdom. But there was all pervasive starvation because during that rule uh, there was famine throughout the land and the people really suffered. So the verse said there was no rich or poor, high or lowly. There was absolutely no high or low because it was supposed to be a classless society. So would you say this was a clear allusion to the Communist Party?
是呃，朱德呢？朱德是狮子，狮子转世，所以这两位呢是可以做呃做王的。一名武双位，五虎人丁，两个人呢本来都不是。<笑>日行很规，可是啊，也是照着人呢、啊、做，呃，在这个世上活着，这个他也还没呃没有这个停止转呢，还是还是停，照常停，呃，地球也没有停止转。海上金鳌，海上金鳌是台湾的。台湾那个地形像个鳌鱼似的，全部绿。在那边呢，台湾是呃呃永庆生平，在那很好。可是啊，铁鸟横空，如果铁鸟就是飞机，飞机要呃飞的时候了，啊，东南见鬼，啊。要是哪一天，呃，哪这个天盖了一个飞机起来，也就是一个一一场豪劫。Continues to paint the scenario of the um the 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 historical epoch, and it says the two sevens were um running wild, and one off had two. Tails, and they were no longer like people. Now, what does this mean? The two sevens is Mao Zedong, and as he stood up at Tiananmen,、uh, watching his troops, he was very proud, very smug. And when he said, "People of China, stand up," he really felt that he had the world in his hand. Now, the cow with two tails. This is basically if you have the cow character in China. And two slashes becomes the word for Zhu, and so this is Zhu the other the other leader of China, and they were no longer people. This is because they were animals that have come to the world to rule. Mao Zedong is actually the reincarnation of an elephant king. If you have watched him in the movies, you can see how he moves, really stay, and how he stomps around like an elephant. And Judah is actually a lion. Well, you see, how could these world leaders be animals? Well, that's not so strange. General Yuan Shikai, who became emperor, was a big frog. So,、uh, an elephant or a lion could rule. And the the verse continues, but the sun and moon continues to revolve. This means things kept on happening. And then there is a golden tortoise in the sea. Now the golden tortoise refers to Tai tortoise that refers to Taiwan because if you look at Taiwan, the shape of the island is、uh, in the shape of a tortoise. So that was the establishment of the nationalist government in Taiwan, and they were wearing、uh, black、uh, courtly. Uh, Rose, and、uh, this is saying that in Taiwan for a while there was a lot of prosperity and affluence, and the people seemed to be enjoying a lot of material wealth. But when the iron birds crisscross in the sky, the southeastern part of the world would be completely reduced to ashes. So this is talking about a time when. Airplanes are flying back and forth、uh, in a frenzy in the sky, and that part of the world will have to suffer a great disaster. The next year, 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 the next year. 白骨入秋，满冈陵。湘江日月见东升。这个我不解释，因为呢，这还没到。<笑>
Ольга Томжова. Quân cái thiên cung trị phân Bóng mong hải yu tiên thần thiên Bài tiên đa sư khuy nô mông Hàm nhìn cái mông thiên bố thiên Nam chào chín vấn thái thiên thân
and his claws will have the dragon motif, but he won't be a king. The sun and moon will recover their brilliance, and throughout the four seas there will be songs and rejoice, and all the people will be blessed, will be blessed by his good fortune. So this is actually a very um, uh, positive, very um, an optimistic outlook. But I will explain this line either because things haven't happened yet. And if you understand, you've understood. If you don't understand, I can help you. But anyway, time is up too. Thank <laughs> you. 